lush forests, jute mills, and all the natural beauty of a river delta. Welcome to the rice fields of Northwest Bangladesh. Although Bangladesh is an important global supplier of rice, unfortunately, it has one of the highest rates of undernutrition. This country has millions of children under the age of five suffering from stunting and hunger. Severe flooding occurs during the monsoon seasons, while agriculture struggles to produce enough food with limited water resources during the dry season. Researchers and NGOs have collaborated with the Bangladeshi government to address these critical food security issues using innovative polyculture techniques. In Northwest Bangladesh, one effective technique was teaching rice farmers to hatch and grow fish in their rice fields. This project was called the Northwest Fisheries Extension Project, funded by DFID and WorldFish, partnering with several organizations. Throughout Bangladesh's rice production history, small native fishes have entered rice fields with the floodwaters. These fishes were often harvested with the rice to feed local communities. The Northwest Fisheries Extension Project took this process one step further. They taught rice farmers to breed carps, and then later tilapia, in their rice fields. Access to groundwater allowed farmers to produce an irrigated rice crop early in the year. The timing meant that large fingerlings could be produced in time to stock the monsoon-filled ponds later that year. The original research team working on rice carp fingerling production including Kevin Camp and Rick Gregory, introduced farmer field schools, which were based on experimental learning models used by the FAO in Indonesia. Back in 1991, fish fingerling production was originally meant to complement reduced use of pesticides. To an extent, the fish cash crop would compensate for rice losses from pests. Initially, with 40 farmers, Common carp was trialed first. The trials were successful and profitable for the farmers, who were happy to have the sound and activity of the animals in their field. Rice farmers grew their fish to fingerling size. At this point, these fish can be eaten directly or sold on to other consumers or to grow out producers. Dr. Hake and Dr. Barman both conducted their PhDs to study the effects of this production system. They found that over 70% of farmers were able to implement the system, and 90% increased fish consumption and their income as a result. These farmers both sold and consumed the fish produced in their rice fields. Mostly for seed. Right. This is smaller size, but the bigger one, they also buy, but maybe directly even they can eat also. NGOs helped to spread this practice throughout the region. Not only has the system endured, it has expanded. Now, this has been changed a lot. A lot of people are just involving. Uh, what we can see over the years, it's a really a big evolution and adaptation. I mean, the seed production has got now two dimension. It's, uh, some, uh, it is in pond, it is in right field, and sometimes it is linked with rice fields and ponds together, so integrated system. Rice farmers have diversified how they produce fish and fingerlings depending on the specific details of their situation. For example, some farmers are able to produce fish and fingerling throughout the year using both rain and irrigated water, while other farmers are restricted by the high price of irrigated water in the dry season. Or some farmers might use only ponds in certain seasons and only their rice field in other seasons. The point is that farmers are adapting and evolving the system in specific ways to meet their individual needs. In the past five years, monosex tilapia hatcheries have popped up. Some rice farmers are buying hatchlings from these hatcheries instead of culturing their own brooders. Some of these fish are grown to fingerling size, then sold to nearby grow-out ponds. Generally, mixed-sex tilapia fingerlings are smaller, cheaper, and grown for sustenance, whereas fast-growing monosex tilapia are bigger and more popular for selling to grow-out producers.
In a survey of rice fish farmers in December 2019, 87% reported an increase in production and listed fish as one of their top income sources. If I use the rice plot for fingerling production for two or two and a half months, it would be a new source of income for my household. After two years, I saw it was a profitable business, so I expanded my culture area. The system has been commercialized uh, with the availability of seed, fish seed, and feed. Entire new markets specializing in fingerling trade have appeared, operating year-round. When did I my research here for my PhD in the Northwest? I have seen that fingerling market was not in an organized way at the time. Fingerling were traded by the traders in the village level. This is a new development that I have never seen before. As, a, as an individual standalone fingerling market developed in an organized way. Farmers come to sell their fingerlings to retailers for local consumption or to traders who f sell the fingerlings onto grow out producers. In the dry season, when fingerling production is low, almost all the fingerlings are sold for local consumption. So initially they started uh, this area, in the, this is Kakina Bazaar. They started, few of them started selling uh, fingerlings from here. And then gradually uh, it's, uh, it increases and increases and more number of farmers are now bringing fingerlings here. Uh, now selling people. More people do fill up the according to them. What, for seed? Seed, seed. Clearly, rice fish fingerling production is supporting local food security as well as commercial fish production systems. Successful research initiatives like the Northwest Fisheries Extension Project are key to addressing global food security issues particularly for areas already culturing water-intensive crops like rice, fish and aquaculture can increase production and maximize limited resources, and could play a critical role in eliminating malnutrition and hunger in a sustainable way. <laughs>